Now we can't cover benchmark regions of the world and uh, iconic parts of the world, if you will, without covering the Rhone. Of course, of course. Caught the Rhone, southern part of, uh, of the Rhone area, a producer that you perhaps haven't heard of, mm -hmm. but sure will become you one of your favorites. This is a uh, Laurent Beyond. This is a 2019 uh, Cote d'Iron Segre, which is which one is, of the... Which is important, right? Because mm -hmm. Cote d'Iron Village is the appellation, and there are only 22 actual villages that can mm -hmm. put their village on the label because they've been kind of deemed uh, like a... It's not exactly an apple. It is an appellation, like, you know... Uh, Chateauneuf de Pop would be, but they're kind of on their way. They're being recognized for their soils, their terroir, and they, they yeah. get to um, celebrate that by putting their, their village name on the label. It so takes a village. It takes a village. Say. So when you're looking for Cote d'Iron, there's so much variation out there in price and style and trying to kind of zone in on high quality. Looking for one of the villages is definitely a thing to do. A uh, producer that just recently, just merely five years ago, turned 100, started in 1919. Uh, celebrating uh, Grenache, 70%, 30% Syrah. This is a beautiful part of, of the Rhone in which the soils kind of steeply change. You get a little bit of that influence of the Mistral, mm -hmm. the little winds. And last time I was in the region, uh, I remember uh, talking to one of the winemakers and uh, a couple of people from the team about this Mistral. It never put it into context to me, but they said, if you're going out and let's say you go shopping and this winds come, they'll almost ripped the door of your car. Wow. So it's very strong. If you think about it as a grape, as a vine, this is cleaning up. It makes the, the vines have really deep roots mm -hmm. to hold on for dear life. <laughs> and also, by doing that, it kind of cleans, aerates all the area right. and creates this thickness on the skin. Absolutely. That's a, it's a very vivid image. Um, and <laughs> yeah, it really comes through. These wines are definitely rich and, and they have a lot of flavor to them, but it's not through oak, it really is through the grapes themselves. Yes, indeed. Um, I get a little bit of that cracked black pepper that I love mm. in Syrah. There's some wild strawberry, a uh, really beautiful wine with a lot of length. I'm like still getting waves and waves Lush. of flavor. A little bit of boysenberry, that, all that. I This is a wine that I bring on barbecue nights. Mm -hmm. You have the smoked brisket, a little yes. bit of that tangy uh, barbecue Southern style sauce. You even have like a burger. This is a burger night kind of component. Steak night, of course, right? Yeah, I, you know what I'm thinking? If you ever have, which sometimes I love to do, is like a breakfast for dinner, Ooh. where you have like blueberry pancakes and bacon for dinner. I don't know, I follow on that one, but <laughs> I'll let you uh, document it and a, share with us. If I were to bring a wine, <laughs> this would be it. Wow, well, more power to you. Cheers. Cheers to breakfast. <laughs>